Hi friends, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be doing a flip through of my quarter two daily log insert. Um, and that is in the traveler's notebook blank insert. I just recently posted the setup for my newest um, insert that I'm using for Q3, which is this one. I will link the setup for it uh, up above in the cards. It does look a little different from the setup video because I continue to add images and like washi tape and stickers as the months continue. And so that looks a little different. And for Q3, I'm using a sterling ink um, insert, but for Q2, I did use the blank traveler's notebook insert, which is what we're gonna be flipping through today. Something that I have been doing is that once the insert has been finished, I will add the tabs and you can see that it is kind of staggered because for the first insert, that's gonna be January, February, and March. And that has the placement over here. I put it on top and I can kind of show you what that looks like. So this is the Q1 and I don't have a flip for this one because I haven't technically finished it. Uh, I started working in these inserts halfway mm, through, I wanna say halfway through March. And so all of this is backlogged from my paper test B6 and there's still a lot of stuff that I have to put in here. So there's no flip through for this one specifically, but I did wanna show you kind of like what I mean by the staggered effect. So I go ahead and just put it on top. I figured out the space by moving it over and then was able to decide where I wanted to place April, May, and June. Once I finish with the Q3 insert, then I will do the same thing and add the tabs. These are tabs from the Traveler's Notebooks Company 2024 range. And then the only other piece of uh, housekeeping before we get to the flip through is that I tend, I tend to house these days my daily log in the olive TN cover. And uh, that's what I have in here along with a yearly um, insert. This is dated for 2024. And right now I'm using that for social media planning. But all that housekeeping out of the way, we can actually get into the flip through. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and do this flip through. So we're gonna start off with the cover and I really like this cover. Um, I do have a video where I set this one up. Again, I will go ahead and link that up above for you to check it out. I essentially was practicing my Japanese on a Midori pad that I have with a four sized paper in this grid. It's like a bluish grid. Just zoom you in here so you can kind of see. And I didn't really have anywhere to put it and I was about to start doing this setup and so I ended up using that for the cover. I covered it up, perfect size because it was MD and it's the same, you know, sizing. And then these stickers are by Mags Monroe. This sticker is from Flesh PNG and this washi tape is from Greta Lusky. This is a, Dol a Dolce Vita sticker and then the washi tapes are just washi tapes that I've had in my stash for a while so I don't really know where they're from. I went ahead and put on these stickers as well as a kind of, I, I collect um, interesting looking sticker skeletons. I actually have a sticker sheet where I have all of my vinyl stickers and then I also include my um, sticker skeletons. So any interesting looking skeletons, I keep them and I enjoy using them in my covers like this. Um, I don't think I did it for the first one, but I definitely did it for um, daily log number three. So that was this cover. And then this little string is some some string that was a part of a happy mail that a friend of mine sent over and I just went ahead and um, glued it in and just have it there um, on the back as a sort of textural thing. So that's where the cover is from. That's what led me to that. And then this is the cover page. So for the cover itself and the cover page, I am a part of quite a few, um, I'm a patron of quite a few artists that send out stickers. And one of my goals for this year was just not to hoard them. So for the most part, what I will do is I will get those stickers and I will place them in my daily log. And so this, it grows and expands as the time span that I'm in this grows and expands. I did end up doing later on, April is kind of a bust, but later on I do end up doing that as well for the cover pages. So all the cover pages end up having the stickers from the era in which the, the the journaling took place. And it'll also have um, come kind of like additional things. Like this washi tape was in a, was used in a envelope to close the envelope on one of the mailing that Angeline sent me. 
Angeline Pei, I believe is how you pronounce um, her name. This is from Paloma the Peach. It's quite a few from Paloma the Peach. This is from Love Soup. This is from Lee Ellickson. And this is also, and this is also Mags Monroe. So that's the cover page. Now, in around the time that I started April, I was doing a sticker per page in my 2024 uh, monthly insert. And I ended up deciding that I didn't want to do that. So I took out all of the stickers and put them on this page. So that's where all the stickers come from. It was like this uh, day of page thing. And you can kind of see that I went ahead and added the date Right, so this is like the 8th, the 11th, 12th, etc., etc. And then the cover page for April was kind of a bust, but um, this is again Love Soup. And this was a little piece of washi that came in one of the envelopes. The beginning of this insert I was doing similar to what I had been doing in the first one, which is a backlog system. Ultimately, I decided that I didn't want to do this for my daily log. I wanted a different system, one that I could keep up with on a daily basis because. What I ended up finding was that this system that I was using for the first insert was very good for backlogging, but not so great for being in it every single day. And I was finding that I didn't want to be in here or I was calculating too much what I wanted to do and the placement of things. And so I ended up deciding that I wasn't going to do that around... Let's see. And you can see I still have to go back in and add all of these spaces. So... What I was doing here, and I think I do have a video where I mentioned this, but I'm not 100% sure, so I will I will mention it here. What I was doing is, through my daily log, if I ended up knowing that I wanted to paste a picture in, I would draw a square where I wanted to paste the picture, and then once it's time for me to print them out, I will measure this spacing with my ruler. So like, for example, here, I know that my picture will have to fit a square that is 10 centimeters by about five and a half centimeters, right? And then I can glue in the picture, remove the lines, and I have the spacing for it without needing to have a template. Because for me, I'm one of those people that doesn't necessarily, I really like how symmetry looks in other people's journals. I love, love, love so much um, journals like Sarika or Wetness, Wetness Plans. Um, let's see who else. There are certain journalers that have this like minimal look in their journals and their images are all the same size and beautiful. And I love how that looks, but I don't often have the ability to make that look good on my pages. <laughs> so for the most part, I tend to not want to have a singular size um, where like, for example, Jess from Plan by Jyla, when she's journaling and she wants to add pictures, she will have a little template um, paper that she will place and then write around it. And I really like that idea, but again, I like having different size images. And so for me, this was a really good workaround um, where I, I knew where I wanted to place an image and the size of it, and I could write around it without necessarily having to paste it in at the moment. And again, this was really good for like backlogging, but when it comes to like actually daily logging, I figured that I didn't actually want to do that. I did end up cutting some pages from here and you can see that later on that will be <laughs> one of the reasons why this journal is a little how should I say it's it's um bursting at the seams a little bit and it's because I, I cut some pages but I couldn't help myself. This is more so the format that you're going to end up seeing moving forward for most of the rest of the pages. Another thing that I do as well as I do number my pages. So I didn't have to do that in this new Q3 insert because the uh, Sterling Ink inserts are numbered. But whenever I go into an insert for Traveler's Notebook, I do number them all every single time. I really, it's really important to me to number them. So um, I tried doing, I had watched a video by, a video by Micah where she was doing different things, like different watercolor techniques inside your TN and I, or inside your journals. I can't remember if it was inside a TN or just journals in general. And I tried it as well and I hated how it came out. So I did rip out the other page <laughs> and then try it again. Um, I really enjoy this margin style and I do it again for most of the rest of the um, pages, but I have experimented with a different style and I do experiment with different styles in here. I do also do some tip-ins. So in this beginning section for April specifically, I tried out a few different tip-ins and this is one of them. Um, this is a sticker by Sophie McPike. This is a sticker by Plan by Jyla. And this is a printable that I printed out on um, clear matte sticker paper by Erin Ware. 
And then this is a little insert. Again, I have a paper pad for empty paper that is blank. And I just um, wrote this in my typewriter and tip that in. These are stamps that came in from a Patreon reward that I really liked. So I just went ahead and pasted that in as well. And I keep track of my media in the margins. Um, I have a media journal that is dedicated to tracking media, but I also enjoy seeing because media consumption is so much a part of my daily life. I like seeing it in my daily log as well. And I am trying to figure out a nice hype of media with that. I still haven't found a way that feels 100% towards what I would like, but it's all experimental. And as long as it's on the page, I can always figure it out later. I, I just enjoy having it. And I do based off of, who was it that I saw the video of? Ellie's Corner. So Ellie's Corner, when I first started using my paper test B6, um, I watched a lot of her videos because at the time she was using it, or at least the videos that I was watching were her paper test B6 videos. And she does a monthly color. And so ever since then, I also do a monthly color, which is interesting because I didn't realize I had already used brown and I used that in my newest insert. Not a big deal, but um, these are also flesh PNG stickers. And then these are also by Paloma the Peach. And I like doing the stickers on my spreads before I do the writing so that I can kind of like write around it. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the stickers come in afterwards. I also really like it when there's a lot of writing, but one of the issues that I have sometimes with a lot of writing is that I would like to have a space where I can kind of see things at a glance without having to read through all of my writing. Something that I say often, um, and I've mentioned it before in the weekly updates with my with my patrons is that for me, the act of writing is a gift to my present self and the images and the stickers and the decoration is a gift for my future self because I need to process a lot of the time. And for the most part, when I'm looking back, I'm mostly focused on imagery more so than the writing itself. I'm usually looking and reading the margins more than I am the chunks of um, writing itself. But at the time, I do feel like it's important for me to process through writing and so that's why, that's why I say that. Um, so here's another space where I experimented a bit with the tip in. I have this handmade paper that I really like and I went ahead and just did some typewriting on it and then one um, tipped it in, but this time with washi tape. That first tip in was with glue and this one was with washi tape. I didn't want to glue this one because I wasn't sure if because of the fiber, the natures of this fibers, if it was going to seep through. So just to be on the safe side, I used washi tape. And then this was when we uh, adopted Gus. So uh, Gus is a orange cat that lives with my mom. We adopted him this week. And what's funny is that I had pasted this down. Was that how it worked? Yeah, I pasted this down before. And it just so happened that we adopted him the day after. And it's like, okay, I manifested an orange cat with this sticker. <laughs> And just like that, we get into May. And the May cover page has to be one of my favorite pages, largely in part uh, because of this beautiful art by Greta Lusky. This was a sticker that came with her art book. If you were a part of her Kickstarter and, you know, um, had that level of add-ons, um, some stickers came in with that. And this is like one of my favorite, favorite stickers from those packs. And I felt like it was especially... Especially, um, it, it really went with May because here in May, May is when it actually, like spring actually starts in May. So we had finally started getting green grass and um, the plants were coming out and it was really nice. This is just a cover that I printed out. Not a cover, a quote that I printed out. And again, some washi tapes from different um, envelopes that came in that had washi. I, I go ahead and stick that in. This is uh, from a printable from Aaron Ware's Patreon as well. And then the color was green, this kind of like vibrant green, which wasn't my favorite, but is what it is. Some stickers. This is from Plan by Jyla. This is one of my favorite spreads as well. I didn't really like it before I stuck down this kind of bluish washi tape. But then after I did that, totally made it for me. This is a Paloma, Paloma the Peach sticker. And again, most of these stickers that I'm mentioning with artists, there are Patreon rewards, uh, but some of them aren't. Like some of Jess's stickers are available at her shop, Planet by Jyla. 
I really like this spread as well. I like, um, I recently been really liking adding things to the fold, to the center fold, and just liking how it interacts with both sides of the page. Here I tried doing brown as my accent color and I did really like that as well. I've noticed that I don't mind having colorful accent colors, but I definitely don't enjoy when I have different writing that isn't in black as the main body. I definitely prefer black as my main color and then just having accents um, in different colors, which is funny because I am a color person. Like I really enjoy color. This is a different spread, also an experimental one. So this week I ended up having to go to South Florida on a business trip and I, did, I didn't I did really have time to do any journaling. So I, what I did and the original plan was that I would write my daily logs in my phones on my notes app. And then the plan was that when I got back, I would transcribe that onto the page. And um, I was, in all honesty, <laughs> I didn't want to, I was getting delayed, right? Like I was... Um, it was a lot to write through and I didn't find myself doing it fast enough where I wasn't going to lose um, daily logs someplace else. And the thing with the daily log for me is that it is very much a presence thing. For me, the way that I do my daily log is an act of presence. And so once the day is gone, I've decided in recent days that once the day is gone, it's gone. For me, the daily log is not so much a historical record as it is a way for me to be present in the moment and be in tune with my thoughts and um, what's kind of going on. It does capture in a way the things that happened, but that's not necessarily the main goal with my daily log, if that makes sense. And so if the day is gone, it's gone and I'd rather that not be the case. And so what I decided was that I was going to copy the notes over onto a Word doc I sized it for the MD paper and I printed it out and, and glued it in. And this is a stamp that my sister stamped onto my notebook when I was at their house. Um, they design stamps. They have their own shop, which I will link down below. And um, I wanted them to stamp my inserts with their stamps. And so they stamped this one right in the center, which was really nice because it was, I don't know, it feels, feels symbolic somehow. And then they also stamped my media journal with their dragon, um, with their dragon insert. Not insert stamp. So that's that. And so that's why these pages look like that. Um, I just used a typewriter font and then printed those out and glued them in. Kind of experimented with the layout as well. Kind of just doing things sideways and just experimenting and having fun. Um, it doesn't always have to be so regimented, right? Like we can choose to, to break the rules even if they're established. And so this is actually one of my non favorite spreads. So these are one of the ones that I don't really like very much. And I think a lot of it is because of the size of my handwriting. I think I prefer it when my handwriting is a bit smaller in these. Um, I think something else that happens is that since this is a blank notebook, I feel like it looks much messier when I write in cursive. And so I don't really like that. And I don't like the way that the green color interacts with the headers, which the headers are beautiful. I have nothing against the headers. They are headers by, or they are um, designs by Erin Ware and I really love them, but I don't like how they interact with this green. So that's a me problem, but not all spreads are winners and that is absolutely okay. You also learn in the things that you don't like, right? So I know that I don't really like this color all that much for interacting with different elements. And so I probably won't ever use it again for a situation like this. And then I got a gift in the mail from Rebecca over at the Mary Post on Instagram. And so this spread is largely using the stickers that she gifted me along with some few others and this little tag that she gifted me as well. Um, Rebecca ended up gifting me about three different things, three different happy meals that month. And so I put all of her notes here in the back. And then this spread, I had originally made it so I, Here's the thing with the daily log is that sometimes I will, or all of my spreads in general, um, sometimes I feel like I want to do spreads ahead of time, but that always seems to bite me in the butt. Um, so I had set up the spread ahead of time and it ended up being that 
I needed to make the June cover page. And so that's why there's a line here and, and all that jazz. I had already decorated with this. And so what ended up happening is that this June page doesn't look like it belongs to summer at all. <laughs> and it's so funny to me, but I really don't mind. I actually kind of really like how it comes out, how it came out, even though it is um, like an utter, uh, like a mess essentially of different types of stickers. Um, something that I did want to mention here as well is that another thing that I did in this one that I really enjoyed, um, instead of using the columns for like TLDRs, what I ended up doing was making little titles for the clusters that I was writing um, so that it's easier for me in the future to see kind of like what these smaller bits of writing are about which I really liked as well. And I wish I was better at implementing this, but I'm not always great at it. But I, I do really like creating like subheaders uh, for myself and my writing. It just isn't always as intuitive as other times. So, so yes, this is the June cover page and these are stickers by Max Monroe, Flesh PNG. This is a stamp, Flesh PNG, Flesh PNG, Paloma the Peach. And then this one, Do What Makes You Happy, is from Plan by Jyla. And I don't really know where all these other ones are from. This is a printable by Erin Ware. And these were gifts, again, from Rebecca. I really like this one. This is more black. Um, oh, this is when Please, Please, Please came out, and it had a chokehold on me. <laughs> Um, okay, and then here. So if you notice, three, four, and then I go to 10. Um, I didn't end up, this is around the time that I'm thinking about what the daily log serves me for, what I want it for, what do I, what is the best use of it? And um, in busy seasons and busy days and days where I don't really have a lot of time, I tend to not be in here. And so I decided to just let it be and let it be lost to time. Um, I think I mentioned it a lot in some of my older videos is that blank pages also tell a story. And so having to skip days also tells a story, right? It tells me that I was busy those days, that maybe I was overwhelmed. I don't have the details, but I don't necessarily need the details every single time. Even though I am a details person, I love having as much detail as I could if it was up to me. I would I would, <laughs> I would, would journal up to the, the smallest detail of my day because I'm crazy like that. But I... I think at this point was already wanting to get out of this insert and you can tell. And then I was also experimenting because we were going into the next half of the year and I have the Avec and I wanted to figure out something to use that for. I ended up experimenting at the same time that I was doing this with the Avec. And so I was talking to Maddie and some of my patrons and the way she does her daily logs is she does a day per page, also in a TN. And so I wanted to try that. And um, I did that. I did that for the rest of June. And I realized that I don't really like day per page. It's one of the reasons why I enjoy using inserts versus um, something like the Avec for daily logging. I don't always use the whole page. I sometimes use more than that. I don't like the constraint that comes with day per page. Um, because I always want to break it either by not writing enough or writing more. And so it didn't really work. But again, even in the failures, experimenting always gives you information. And so there are some spreads that I really, really enjoy. Um, these dates, by the way, are by Erin Ware as well on her Patreon. It's a printable. Um, this is also Erin Ware. And these are stickers that I got from Rebecca again. And so I experimented here with a two column, which I really like. I do like writing in columns. It's one of the reasons I really enjoy the vertical weekly for memory keeping and daily logging. Um, I tried here just doing my regular margin, but I don't really like that much. I did that for these days. And you can see here, oh, Wednesday was my birthday. Um, I really like the colors of the spread, but I didn't end up writing anything. I might go in and add pictures later on, but I'm not sure. I'm just letting it be what it is. Um, I was busy this, these couple of days, busy here as well. Um, and didn't journal here. And so then you can see, right. I, I, I set up these pages beforehand and I don't necessarily stick to them. And so does it bother me? No, not really, but it is a waste of space if I don't necessarily need to do this. Right. So again, just information letting me know, okay, maybe day per page isn't as in alignment with me as possible. Something else that I was struggling with is kind of like this top area. 
I liked it in theory. I wanted to do something with it, but I didn't really find what to do with it that worked well. And so here I was, um, I wrote down a little post-it and put it in here. I think this is related to my media journal. So I have to go into the media journal and add that, which I'm working on right now. There should be a flip for that soon. Um, I'm finishing up catching or rather I'm catching up on some of the spreads so that I can do the proper flip through. I really enjoy this spread. Um, and at this point I was doing dual daily logs. So I was doing a daily log in the insert and I was doing a daily log in the avec. Um, this is one of my favorites. I really enjoy the two columns because it just creates this wall of writing, which is very pleasing to me. Um, and I really like the images, but again, my issue with the images is that I never know. I just don't know um, with specifically printing these types of images that are from my um, my little my thermal printer. I don't like printing less than five or six images at a time, and I don't always have five or six images at a time to print out. And so trying to figure out how I'm going to size it and all that stuff, it, it can be a little tedious for me when I'm trying to just stream of consciousness, right? Because my daily log is so much stream of consciousness that it makes it a little difficult. And in this case, it worked because I was technically backlogging because I did it in my effect first and then I knew what I was writing in here. But that's not always the case in my day to day, right? Like I'm usually just writing as I go. So again, just information on what I like and don't like. Here is another two column spread. And you can tell like this is falling apart at this point. Um, I think in the next one, you might notice a little better. Yeah, this one. So you can see it's kind of like splitting up. Um, <laughs> um, I really like how these spreads look, even if they are a mess. I love um, the bold black lines, black lettering. It's just so pretty to me. I had received my Sterling Ink um, notebook here, my media journal. So I was writing about that. This is just a post-it that I had um, for some notes that I was doing in my, in my weekly update for Patreon. Didn't end up um, doing anything these days. Didn't end up doing anything this day. And then <laughs> lots of empty pages. Also something that I forgot to mention is once I decided that I was going to do this kind of like day per page, it ended up being the exact amount of pages that I needed to finish the month. So it was, I was like, I have to try it. Like, like given the coincidence of the timing and the amount of pages, I have to try it. So I did. And this one has absolutely no stickers because I was, again, I just wanted to be out of it and I was just writing a lot and I really do enjoy how it looks, but it definitely takes a lot to, for me to like actually read <laughs> what's in it. Not that I can't, it's just not necessarily what I would like to do. Um, oh, my hero academia. Anyways, um, and yeah, just sticking in post-its uh, just based on things that I saw and things that I'm thinking about. I have a collection of post-its that I wanna use and um, here I started, and um, once you see my flip through from my other journals, you'll see that I started experimenting with clocking into my journal in the same way that the common corner does. L, L, L at the common corner, I believe is her name. I really like that concept. It doesn't work very much for me and I don't know why my brain chooses to not let it work, <laughs> but somehow it doesn't. Um, but I really like the idea of clocking into the journal very, very much. Um, oh, and then on the 29th, I reached 1000 subscribers and um, I cried. I cried a lot of tears. I'm, I'm so grateful for every single one of you that has subscribed. I don't think there has been a video yet that I recorded after the fact. Um, and I am just so, so, so grateful for every single one of you. Um, I didn't think that I was gonna reach 100 subscribers, let alone 1000. And so I am just, <sighs> flabbergasted that any of you um, enjoy my videos enough to want to come back time and time again to watch them. So very grateful. And with that, the last page was the 30th of June and one of my favorite spreads um, didn't even have a margin, just used a washi tape on the side. Really, really like it. Didn't end up finishing and that is okay. Again, last page is just some swatches and notes from Rebecca. And that is the insert. Um, 
I really love the cover page. I love being in here. The information that it gave me um, was very valuable for how um, I like and don't like journaling. And at the end of the day, all of it is information. I get to tell you all of these things even months later because I actually wrote them down. Like I could tell you just from looking at this, oh, this was the week I went traveling to um, Florida. And oh, I actually set this up and had to post a poll um, to see if anyone wanted it to become the, the title page for June or if it would just be an empty page. Um, I can look at these spreads and remember what was happening around the time because I've done the work of writing it down, even if it's not necessarily pretty. And so I think that's the power of memory keeping. And um, one of the reasons I really enjoy having a daily log, it's the same reason I enjoy having things like my monthly playlist on Spotify or my media journal. Um, once you once you cement things onto paper, there are certain moments within that realm, that time realm that become associated to that and help you remember, especially for someone like me who has terrible memory. Um, that's, that's really important. Not just the act of being able to read what you wrote, but just seeing the spread, seeing the attachments to, to those things. Um, it's, it's really nice and it's very, very special. So I'm going to go ahead and now do a silent flip through with just music. And, um, yeah, you can go ahead and watch that if you would rather, um, just, if you want to just do a silent flip, um, Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.